Hey everyone, Jackie here and welcome back to the Women Kick Balls YouTube channel. And today's video is going to be about career advice. And so just to give you all context on social media or emails, I often get a lot of inquiries about people asking me for my career advice as an entrepreneur or asking me how I've done certain things. And while I enjoy getting to talk to people and to share my insight, I can't always, of course, respond to these inquiries or set up one-on-one -on -one meetings um, and answer these questions. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to create this YouTube channel as a resource and have one of these monthly segments be about my career advice or insight. And so today I'm going to dive into the top three things that I don't do when it comes to being an entrepreneur. Being that I've been in the sports industry for over eight years now, there's obviously a lot of different things that I've learned of what to do and what not to do. And so in, these are going to be some general topics. They're not going to be specifically in terms of a sports journalist or working in graphic design or other skills like that. So these are just three general things that I wanted to share about that I feel like can be applied into a lot of areas. So we're going to dive into the first one, which is I don't get my identity wrapped up in my work as a sports journalist, a PR specialist, a marketer, a graphic designer, a writer, whatever title or kind of just category that you do work in. Being that I specialize and dabble in a lot of those areas that I just mentioned, for example, when it comes to graphic design, if you are working with a client or someone, your, your company, and you're asking for feedback and they start critiquing it and want to change stuff, um, it's always just important to be mindful that those critiques or that feedback isn't ever directly personal towards you. At least that's not how it's supposed to be. And so that's something where as a graphic designer, I've learned to very much separate myself from my work. And in general, even as a sports journalist, I don't get wrapped up in that title or, or being independent because at the end of the day, the work that I do is valuable. It's important. But I'm also a human and there's things that we go through as humans as well. And so it's important because, example, for another example, if you were working for a big name publication as a writer and that publication starts going through budget cuts and you get cut as a writer, then your identity is so caught up in your company or your role or your job that once you get cut, you kind of start going through these like... I don't know, midlife crisis moments of wondering like, well, what am I or, or what's my worth? Or what's my value? And so I've seen that a lot with sports journalists, um, for example, through the pandemic or just different things like that. Life changes so fast. And so I think it's important to not wrap your identity up in that. And so again, while sports is a big part of my life, it's actually something that, um, you know, for example, when I'm talking with my friends, I don't just talk about myself, my career all the time. I actually prefer not to talk about my career with my friends, um, and my tight knit circles that way, because it's so nice to hear about their life or to talk about just, I don't know, our new favorite song or a coffee shop, whatever. So it's nice to have that distance between my career uh, and my personal life as well. And I think that's how, again, my opinion, I think that's how it should be in terms of not wrapping up your identity in this thing of work or this title. And so those are just some of my thoughts on one of the reasons why I don't um, really put a lot of weight and identity into uh, my title when it comes to being a sports journalist and a freelance content creator. And the second thing that I don't do is actually in more relation towards social media, but being that everything's on social media nowadays, I feel like this is important to talk about. And so I don't feed into trolls when it comes to social media. And I'll share a little bit more about what that means. So another kind of personal rule that or standard that I've set is specifically, I don't respond to people who don't follow me. So on Twitter, for example, I feel like it's so easy to see people's just thoughts or tweets um, that you don't follow. Because if your friend likes it or retweets it, then it comes up in your feed. And so anyways, if people respond to me or start asking me questions or um, have a negative thing to say, I, I just don't re respond to them, especially if they don't follow me. And so that's something where for me personally, like I've just it's relieved so much like um, I guess stress or just it's it's nice to not have to like feed into that. And I feel like sometimes when I first started out in my career, I often was like, I wouldn't pick fights on social media with people, but if someone was like, oh, a woman don't deserve equal pay, I would like list out the facts. And I realized that even just trying to like, while the facts that I was listing were like totally true, um, even listing them out, like people usually don't want to listen. They want to be heard. And so I've, I've seen that a lot with social media is that people put their thoughts out there and they expect you to just like, 
listen or figure it out right away. And so um, another quote that I heard from from someone that I follow, he was talking more specifically just about the people yeah, who don't want to listen. They have their own agenda in a conversation. He said, don't negotiate with chaos. And I, I feel like oftentimes that's what trolls are intended. Um, that's their intention is that they want to like create chaos and they don't really care about what you have to say. And so that's just something for me personally where I don't, um, again, start initiating conversations with, with people, especially when they don't follow me. So that's just something that I feel like has been helpful on my end and just wanted to share that. And speaking of social media, the third thing that I don't do is I don't worry about how many followers I have or don't have. Um, that's just something where for me, I feel like when I first started out, it was obviously about growing your platform or your audience, which is great. But you know, sometimes you see people and they're like, oh, get me to 5,000, you know, like, uh, followers on Instagram follow right now. And you're like, okay, like maybe I'll like, maybe you're down and you'll follow them or maybe you're just like, okay, whatever. Um, and so I feel like when it comes to, again, social media followers specifically, um, to me, it's just like, cool, you have them. But, um, I feel like sometimes it could be exhausting when you're really trying to like invest a lot of time and energy. And again, kind of goes back to point number one of your identity into building something up. And so actually I got this idea from this book that I've read. Um, it's called show your work by one of my favorite writers, Austin Cleon. I talk about him a lot. I think I've talked about him a few weeks ago, one of his other books, but this point comes from this book. Um, and I wanted just to read like a quick sentence or two from it. Cause I thought it was really good. And this section is called, you want hard not eyeballs and he says stop worrying about how many people follow you online and start worrying about the quality of people who follow you don't waste your time reading articles about how to get more followers don't waste time following people online just because you think it'll get you somewhere don't talk to people you don't want to talk to and don't talk about stuff you don't want to talk about if you want followers be something sorry if you want followers be someone worth following and I just really like his thoughts on some of these because I feel like um, when I first started out again, I was so like hyped up and wanting to, to build something. Um, but I realized there's so much more behind it versus just telling people, Hey, go follow my social media account or go do this or go do that. Um, and for those of you who follow me or maybe you see me around on social media, one of the things, and I've talked about it on here as well. And one of my goals is to reach 5,000 email subscribers. And I say that because I want to put that number so that way I know like people who um, ask me about it, like, hey, how many subscribers are you at or whatever. And I think, um, you know, maybe you're like, well, what about the email subscriber thing? Isn't that the same? And I feel like it is a little bit different in that I'm not saying, hey, follow um, you know, or sign up to the newsletter right now or else. Like, I'm not um, pressuring people. I'm just letting people know about my goal of how many subscribers I want to reach. And I feel like that's different when you're informing someone of your goals versus you're like putting this demand, like, hey, follow this. And so uh, that's why I just wanted to give that example of that distinction as well. So those are the three things that I don't do when it comes to being an entrepreneur in sports media. And I hope that was helpful for you because I wish I kind of had someone to hear these thoughts from when I was starting out my career. But, you know, with anything, you always learn with experience as well. So if you found it, this video to be helpful, it'd be so great if you can show it some love by either giving a follow or a like here on YouTube. As I mentioned before, every month I do one of these career like advice insight videos. So hopefully you were able to take away a few key things from it. And as always, too, this is just my experience. So feel free to just take snippets of things um, and then leave other things behind as well. That's literally what I've done throughout my entire career. So uh, just wanted to give you all that insight in terms of where I'm coming from as a sports journalist, entrepreneur, um, and on the freelance route especially. So those are some of my thoughts. And next week, I'm excited to share more about my three monthly favorites that I have. And so um, I actually have like some really cool things I'm excited to share about on that. So hopefully. Hopefully you can tune in next week as well. But either way, hope you have a great weekend. And yeah, see you, some of you here next Friday.